We have all the latest on the blockbuster decision by Google to deal Chinese company Huawei a major blow by cutting its Android license. Google says it had to due to the US government's recent actions. A startling revelation from US President Donald Trump. He says North Korean leader Kim Jong-un wanted to remove only one or two of the five nuclear sites in his country during their summit in Hanoi in February. Plus, stressing the importance of the decades-old alliance. In a rare meeting, President Moon Jae-in is set to host the commanding generals of South Korea and the US forces Korea for a luncheon at the Blue House. Our top story this morning, U.S. President Donald Trump has revealed North Korean leader Kim Jong-un told him during their summit in Hanoi that he wanted to remove only one or two of the regime's five nuclear sites. Trump's latest remarks signal why the two sides couldn't reach a deal in Vietnam. Lee Sung Jae starts us off. In an interview with Fox News that aired on Sunday local time, U.S. President Donald Trump revealed one of the major reasons why Pyongyang and Washington could not reach a deal during their summit in Hanoi in February. According to the U.S. President, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un offered to remove only one or two of the five nuclear sites in the north, while Trump wanted all the sites to be shut down. Since the Hanoi summit, the two sides have failed to bridge the gap over the scope of the North's denuclearization and U.S. sanctions relief leaving negotiations at an impasse. However, President Trump highlighted during the interview that there have been no nuclear or long-range missile tests thanks to his administration's diplomatic efforts with North Korea. The question remains on how the two sides will deal with the stall in nuclear negotiations as Pyongyang has launched a series of projectiles and short-range missiles in recent weeks to pressure Washington to show some flexibility. The North Korean leader has even set up a year-end deadline for the U.S. to come up with what he called the right methodology so they can move forward. During the same interview, President Trump also reiterated that he will not allow Iran to have nuclear arms. Despite writing a series of threatening tweets on Iran, Trump says he wants to avoid conflict and insisted he's reluctant to go to war. Lee seung Arirang News. Now, President Moon Jae-in has invited key commanders of the South Korean and U.S. military to a luncheon at the Blue House later today. The top office says the lunch guests will include Defence Minister Jong Gyeong Do, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Park hang and General Robert Abrams of U.S. Forces Korea. It will be the first meeting of its kind since President Moon took office some two years ago. He's likely to reaffirm the strong South Korea-U.S. alliance, especially after the collapse of the North Korea-U.S. summit in Hanoi and the recent developments on the Korean Peninsula. And President Moon has thanked the UAE's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan for his active support in the recent release of a South Korean man who was abducted in Libya last year by an armed militia group. According to the Blue House spokesperson, during their 20-minute phone conversation late Tuesday, the president said it was a good example of how strong the two countries' relations are, agreeing that their bilateral ties are developing immensely since their summit in February. The two sides said their cooperation in 5G, artificial intelligence and energy is making solid progress, also sharing concerns over attacks on civilian vessels near the Strait of Hormuz, South Korea and the US. UAE agreed to work together for the stability of the Middle East. Now, the United States has decided to allow Huawei to purchase US-made products for 90 days after blacklisting the Chinese firm uh, just last week. Uh, Kim Dami with more. On Monday, the U.S. government eased some of the restrictions it imposed last week on China's Huawei, suggesting changes to Huawei's supply chain may have immediate, far-reaching consequences. The U.S. Commerce Department will allow the Chinese company to buy American-made products for 90 days in order to maintain existing networks and provide software updates to existing Huawei handsets. 
Huawei, however, is still banned from purchasing American parts and components for manufacturing new products without license approvals. The delay suggests that the U.S. intends to limit the impact on firms that rely on Huawei and to prevent possible network blackouts. Meanwhile, Chinese customers are turning their back on iPhones and showing their disdain for Apple products on social media. One of those customers was a senior media figure Hu Shijin, the editor of China's Global Times newspaper, who tweeted on Monday that he had switched to a Huawei phone, ditching the iPhone that he had been using for nine years. Considering his status, there is a rising concern China may be in the course of promoting Apple boycotts as retaliation against the Trump administration's blacklisting of Huawei. This all comes after the U.S. added Huawei and 68 other affiliates to an expert blacklist last Thursday, prohibiting them from purchasing goods made in the U.S. Top IT companies, including Google, have cut ties with Huawei as well. The Chinese tech firm is yet to comment on the U.S. delay announced on Monday, but has pledged to keep contributing to the development and growth of Android around the world. China's Foreign Affairs Ministry also said it is committed to supporting Chinese enterprises by defending their legitimate rights through legal means. Kim Dami, Arirang News. Now, Chinese President Xi Jinping's recent visit to a rare earth facility in China's Ganzhou city has fueled speculation these strategic materials could be used as part of a retaliation measure as Beijing's trade war with the U.S. heats up. China's Xinhua News Agency reported on Monday that President Xi was accompanied by Liu He, the vice premier who has been leading the Chinese side in the trade negotiations with Washington. Ganzhou is known for its rare earth mining and processing industry. The U.S. relies on China, the dominant global supplier, for about 80, 80 percent of its rare earth imports. Now it seems global trade weakness will likely extend into the second quarter of this year and the outlook for the world economy could worsen even further amid the US-China trade tensions. This is according to the World Trade Organization on Monday, the organization said in its latest quarterly World Trade Outlook indicator that uh, that was 96.3, and that's a nine-year low. A reading greater than 100 suggests above-trend trade growth, and below 100 indicates below-trend growth. The WTO said the outlook could worsen if heightened trade tensions are not resolved or if macroeconomic policy fails to adjust to the changing circumstances. South Korea's producer prices rose for the third month in a row in April, mainly due to an increase in industrial goods prices. The Bank of Korea says the production price index, a key barometer of future consumer inflation, edged up 0.3 per cent on month in April. The central bank attributed the rise to higher prices of industrial goods like petroleum products, which rose 0.3 per cent on higher global oil prices. Agricultural goods prices jumped over 1 per cent on month on increased demand for livestock products. Now, policymakers from some 70 countries have gathered here in South Korea for a special meeting to discuss how they can cooperate to create peace and prosperity for people around the world. Kan hyang reports. The United Nations Office for Sustainable Development has kicked off a five-day executive training course for policymakers on the 2030 Agenda in the western port city of Incheon. Some of the 2030 Agenda's sustainable development goals include providing quality education for all, promoting decent employment and economic growth, reducing inequalities, tackling climate change, bringing peace and developing global partnership. Another thing is the lesson learned from all over the world. Yes, we're different in terms of the name of the country, but at the end of the, the day, it's one planet, so our issues are really close to one another. The course will have presentations from a number of experts and participants, group discussions and plenary seminar sessions with some 70 countries taking part. Uh, obstacles and challenges are part of the game, right? 
uh, and as long as you understand what are the uh, what are the challenges and what are the problem areas, this is where you can make the difference. The meeting also offers a networking opportunity for policymakers in central and local government and policy shapers in the private sector. Over the five-day course, the participants will learn effective practices and strategies to help them implement the Agenda 2030 and Sustainable Development Goals in their home countries. Kanyo, Arirang News. Now, with this year's France FIFA Women's World Cup kicking off next month, the South Korean women's national team, they held a ceremony in Seoul on Monday to unveil their team members and also official uh, kit. Uh, Lee min Sun went to check it out and filed this report. The South Korean women's national football team held a ceremony on Monday night ahead of the 2019 France FIFA Women's World Cup. The Korea Football Association released the final entry list of 23 players on Friday last week. The list includes some of South Korea's star players like Ji Soyeon of Chelsea FC Women's and Cho Soyeon of West Ham United Women's. The women's national team made to the round of 16 for the first time at the 2015 Canada World Cup. With more experienced players competing in France, fans are hoping for similar results this year. Since it's the second World Cup for many players, including myself, I have no doubt that we will do well. I also want to draw unexpected results from a match against a strong team. Our players and I will take encouragement from the fans today. We are prepared to show that your support will not be in vain. Under the slogan of Break the Silence on the Ground, the women's team hopes to bring excitement and cheerfulness to the fans and to South Korean women's football. Some 200 people, including players, coaching staff and officials, along with football fans, attended the ceremony to celebrate and wish for successful results at the 2019 France FIFA Women's World Cup, slated to kick off on June 8th. The women's national football team will leave for Sweden on Wednesday for a warm-up match before heading to France on June 2nd. Lee min Sun, Arirang News. Now, if you've ever been to South Korea, you'll know very well that coffee shops are pretty much everywhere. And finally, the country's coffee brewing is starting to gain some real global recognition. Last month, a local barista stood atop the global stage for the first time, being crowned the top barista in the world. Now, Won jong Han travelled down to Busan to find out the secret of her success. The young lady with a passionate smile is Jeon Joo-yeon, the winner of the 2019 World Barista Championship. She came first out of 2,500 contenders from over 50 countries in Boston last month, becoming not only the first South Korean to win the prestigious award, but also the second woman to win the title. Her dedication to coffee making began around 10 years ago, but even then, she dreamed of being the best in the world. At that time, people saw baristas as part-timers rather than a professional job. But when I saw the previous WBC videos, I realized that such career could also be respected by many people. Ever since then, I dreamed of standing on the world stage. At the previous edition of the World Barista Championship in Amsterdam, John finished in 14th place. But when she entered this year, she tried a slightly different approach trying to show coffee's magnetism by delivering her presentation with genuine passion, sitting on the table addressing the judges like they went out for a casual, friendly coffee together. The presentation contained a lot of scientific terms which were unfamiliar to many people. So in order to get closer to everyone, I came up with the idea of creating a much more friendly atmosphere when presenting my coffee. For her winning routine, John chose to focus on how carbohydrates affect the flavor balance experienced when drinking coffee. And to smoothly explain all of these scientific terms to judges in English, she traveled to the UK for three months. No one can be perfect in English in two or three months. But since I'm representing my country on the world stage, I wanted to at least get rid of the fear of speaking English to others. For John, Coffee is energy, not just from because it's full of caffeine, but also 
because she heard numerous times from her customers how refreshed and recharged they felt after drinking her coffee. Becoming the Barista World Champion wasn't luck or magic. It was Chun's positive energy towards the judges and crowds which she has been practicing in Korea's southern city of Busan since 2009. Won Jong-hwan, News, Busan. Now, some members of U.S. Congress are expressing frustration about the lack of Iran-related information they are receiving from the Trump administration. For more on this and other news from around the world, let's turn to our Hong Yu. So, Senator Lindsey Graham has come out strongly. He says he believes Iran is responsible for the recent attacks in the Middle East. That's right, Mark. Lindsey Graham, who is a U.S. senator close to President Trump, says Iran was behind recent security incidents in the Middle East and urged an overwhelming military response if Tehran harms U.S. interests in the region. His comments came after he was briefed on tensions with Tehran by U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton, a well-known hawk who had been in favor of an attack on Iran even before he took his role in the Trump administration. Graham wrote on Twitter that Iran has attacked pipelines and ships of other nations and created threat streams against American interests in Iraq. He also said he's in favor of a military response if the Iranian threats against American personnel and interests are activated. Yet there are diverting opinions on the intelligence shared by Bolton, as a Democratic lawmaker, Representative Ruben Gallego of Arizona, tweeted that is not what is being said, adding that Graham is biased and has drawn the conclusion he wants for himself and the media. As tensions between Tehran and Washington continue to escalate, a lengthy classified briefing on Iran took place last week, and Democrats have voiced fears that Trump could go to war against Iran. Trump had tweeted on Sunday that, quote, if Iran wants to fight, that will be the official end of Iran, never threaten the United States again. In response, Iran's foreign minister called on the U.S. to address Tehran with respect. Ukraine has sworn in comedian Volodymyr Zelensky as the country's sixth president. In his inauguration speech on Monday, Zelensky announced the dissolution of the parliament and called for a snap parliamentary election that was originally scheduled for October 27th. He said he was dissolving parliament to end the conflict with Russian-backed rebels in the east. Zelensky attacked ministers during this speech, saying he did not understand why they kept saying they could not do much to change the situation in Ukraine. Shortly after his speech, the prime minister, defense minister, the foreign minister and the head of the National Security Council all resigned. The former TV star had campaigned strongly against corruption. Ford Motor will cut about 10 percent of its global salaried workforce, cutting about 7,000 jobs by the end of August as part of a larger restructuring process. According to Ford CEO Jim Hackett on Monday, the cuts will include both voluntary buyouts and layoffs, adding that it freezes open positions as well. The company's spokesperson says about 2,300 workers in the U.S. will be laid off. Within the cuts, Ford Motor will also eliminate close to a fifth of upper-level managers, a move intended to reduce bureaucracy and speed up decision-making. The restructuring move is expected to save the American automaker $600 million U.S. million every year. The highest level tornado warning has been issued in Texas and Oklahoma by the U.S. National Weather Service's Storm Prediction Center. Forecasters warned of a major severe weather outbreak on Monday over parts of northwest Texas and western and central Oklahoma. Around 6 million people need to brace for possible large tornadoes, along with hail, flash flooding and hurricane force winds. The first tornado touched down on Monday afternoon in a rural area of Texas. The Federal Storm Prediction Center advised people in the region to have a plan for seeking shelter if a storm approaches.
Time now for our Life and Info segment where we focus on information that we hope is useful for your everyday life. Gyeonggi-do province is home to the Hwasong wetlands and uh, this was uh, formed off a lake and reclaimed land. Now thousands of birds from around the world descend on the area each and every year and the city of Hwasong is aiming to get the wetlands internationally recognised by the year 20. 21. Park Seong has this report. Hwasong Lake, located southwest of Seoul, was created by building a causeway where fresh river water flows into the Yellow Sea. The lake is just over 17 square kilometers in size and serves as a resting spot for around 40,000 migratory birds every year, including the endangered black-faced spoonbill. Last year, the area was listed as part of the East Asian Australasian Flyway. The Hwasong wetlands have been visited by ecology experts from home and abroad, including officials from the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands of International Importance. And this means inter internationally important for water birds, but also locally and nationally important for fisher folks and for farmers. It's an incredibly important resource for Hwasong City, but also for the nation as a whole. At an international symposium held earlier this month, the mayor of Hwasong announced that the city is now aiming to get the site designated as a national wetland protection area in 2020 and added to the Ramsar list of wetlands of international importance by 2021. We've been promoting the importance of the Hwasong wetlands by building a cooperative system with private governance and working with local and foreign groups. The participants at the symposium emphasized that the Hwasong wetlands can benefit both the tourism industry and the fishing industry while preserving the ecological environment. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Korean food delivery service Bedal Minjok has, uh, will enter rather, the Vietnamese market from next month after it acquired a local online food ordering platform called Vietnam in February, according to Ua Brothers, operator of Korea's leading food delivery app. It has begun pilot testing in Vietnam ahead of the full launch. Services will first be offered in Ho Chi Minh City, soon to be followed by Hanoi and other provinces. The Bemin Vietnam app is available for download through App Store and Google Play Store. According to industry sources, new player Bemin will face strong competition from both local and foreign firms in Vietnam's delivery market, which is expected to be worth uh, more than 38 million US dollars by next year. Travelers from South Korea are now able to use automated e-gates at 15 airports across the United Kingdom. The e-gates, which were only previously accessible to British and European passport holders, have been extended to South Korean passport holders, along with visitors from Australia, Canada, Japan, New Zealand, Singapore and the United States as of May 20th. Travellers aged 18 and over travelling with those passports that have a chip in them can use e-gates without registering in advance. Children between the ages of 12 and 17 can use the gates when accompanied by an adult. The British government has also decided to scrap paper landing cards for international passengers. Good morning. A chilly morning is turning into a warm afternoon and that's going to lead to wide temperature differences across much of the country. Some areas including Punghua and Changsu started out with low single digit morning lows. So gaps there could be as wide as 20 degrees Celsius including some of inland areas. And as for major cities on the map, daily highs will range between 23 and 27 degrees Celsius, Seoul, Chuncheon getting up to 23 degrees, Gyeongju will get up to 27 degrees under dazzling sunshine, and it shouldn't be as windy as yesterday. As the sun will shine down on us all day, most parts are forecast to have very high UV rays, including here in the capital. The Gyeongsangdo provinces will have high ozone levels in the afternoon as well. Air quality though will be normal across the country. 
A warming trend will return at the end of the week. And sunny skies to dominate this week and into the weekend. So it is very likely we will have high ozone and UV levels in the afternoon. That's Korea for you, and here's the international weather for viewers around the world. Well, that's all we have for now on this Tuesday morning here in Seoul. Stay tuned to Arirang TV. We'll have our next newscast. That's coming up at noon Korea time with E.G. Yoon. So until then, goodbye. Following the inter-Korean summits and the North Korea-U.S. summits, a journey toward peace on the Korean peninsula has become inevitable. 2019 will see countless twists and turns in negotiations as all parties involved work to build peace and search for a winning solution. Peace and Prosperity will explore paths to find these resolutions with a special emphasis on the expected role of Seoul. Peace and Prosperity Arirang TV signature talk show, Heart to Heart. We bring in world leaders, business people, experts, celebrities, artists, and Koreans who have made an impact in Korea's status in the world. Hear their professional and personal life stories, as well as their social and political views, achievements, secrets to success, and future plans. Don't miss your chance to catch the engaging interview, Heart to Heart. Stunning visuals, stylish editing, Arts Avenue. From age-old traditions to modern styles, explore in detail Korea's culture and arts by introducing the latest showcases around town and offering insight to the trends and traits of Korean creativity. Discover the beauty and depth of Korean culture and arts on Arts Avenue. <laughs>